quiet now. <laughs> Dog. Is this my, oh, is that yours? Then? No, it's not really yours. Then. Okay. Okay. Would you please join me in welcoming our guests? for this Safe House press conference, Denzel Washington and director Daniel Espinosa. Now, time is unbelievably tight, so I'll get the ball rolling with a question and we'll take as many as we can in the limited time that we have left. <laughs> first, first question. Yeah. That's your next job? Yeah, no, no, no. That was my wife. She's gonna be angry now. Okay. Yeah. I, watching the film, it seemed to me, it, it seemed so contemporary, uh, what with the, the WikiLeaks kind of, angle, but also the, the elements of waterboarding and some of the other stuff. Now, was all that there in the screenplay that you, you both saw initially, or was that added through the further research that you all did? No, that was in the script. That was, uh, that was part of the whole vibe when I read it. It had like um, a real base in, in our reality. We also used uh, different experts um, that had actually worked in safe houses and been uh, operatives to be able to base this movie in some kind of reality, something that's close to our society and, and our world right now. Denzel, does, does this make it a very um, controversial film, do you think, back home? Because it's not clear who the, the good guys and the bad guys are as, as we move through the film until we get a clearer perspective at the end. When, when you say back home, you mean? In the States, because you know that there's rogue elements of the CIA running through the film, as well as guys who perhaps do the right thing for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. And all of that kind of muddies the waters over who, who exactly is on the side of good and who isn't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, who knows? What is it over here? MI5, MI6? Mm -hmm. MI5, MI6. Who knows what they do? Mm. You know, we don't, we, don't, uh, we don't know what they do. You know, we know that uh, we want to be protected. You know, then we claim we want them to be fair and don't torture people, you know, but I think that on 9-11, 9-12 in New York, everybody was for torture, you know, or they wanted to get to the bottom of whoever it was, you know, and the further away you get from that, then you, you want your, you know, your country to play fair or something, you know, I don't think it would have made sense for President Obama to come on the air and say, oh, by the way, next Tuesday we're going to shoot Bin Laden, you know, they're going to do it the way they're going to do it, you know, and, uh, you know, it's a dirty <coughs> business. Mm -hmm. and, and given that these guys, these characters operate in a world of secrecy, was it quite straightforward finding out some of the stuff you obviously found out and, and getting people to talk to you? You had a, a consultant on set, I think. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, our consultant, what moved me was not so much like uh, the practical expertise, uh, you know, in, always when you make a movie, I always like having an expert there, you know, because I want to direct my movie, you know, I have my vision. Uh, but but uh, with, with, with Falcon, what, what got to me was when we were shooting certain scenes, I could see that he was he was emotionally moved sometimes, mm. and uh, and when we started talking, uh, we talked a lot about how this work that he had done had affected his personal life, and how it affects you as a human being. Because these people that get into this line of business, I mean, they go there out of ethical reasons in the beginning, but what they're forced to do uh, for their country or for what they believe in sometimes is highly unethical acts and how does that affect you as a human being and that that's nothing political that's something that's human how do we live with our compromises of our own ethics and that's somehow for me the core of the movie just before i throw it over to my colleagues denzel you had a particular book i think that you relied upon the sociopath next door <laughs> sounds fun yeah tell us more I, I, I just took it from the opposite angle. I just think that Tobin Frost was a sociopath. Uh, when I thought of sociopaths, I, I thought of violence. I didn't realize that they say 80-85% of sociopaths aren't violent, but they're manipulative. They'll lie, they'll use charm, wit, pity, you know, oh, I'm not as good as you. And as soon as you start saying, you know, no, no, Denzel, you're all right, then I got you. 
now I'm, I'm starting to manipulate you. I, 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 I took the, the opposite sort of attack than, than what Daniel was just saying. I think that Tobin Frost had the skill set that the CIA appreciated. They didn't know to what degree. They didn't necessarily know he was a sociopath. I think his blood pressure goes down when there's murder and mayhem. I think he was interested in winning. Every day I wrote in my script or in my journal, how am I going to win today? What am I going to win? So when the guys talk about waterboarding, I talk about you don't even have the right towels. You know, how stupid are you? You know, uh, you know sometimes I use charm. Sometimes, we would, like when we were the scene in the, 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 in the soccer stadium, I started screaming like a little girl. Oh, he's trying, he's trying to kill me, he's trying to kill me. As soon as I get away, then I kill. Mm. I think that he was such a sociopath, and such a manipulator, and it's a movie, that he chose not to even kill the young kid there. He'd rather play with him, mm. and it's a movie I didn't need. It would be problematic if you give him that urge. I should have shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we stood there and then says, I, I feel like shooting him. And yeah. I said, I don't think that's a good yeah, idea right now. Yeah. I Maybe have to go with the goal, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I got as close as I can get. And, yeah, yeah. and we, 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 we uh, Daniel trimmed it back a bit because I was probably overacting. But I was <laughs> sticking the gun in different places on him and just making him, you know, just making him feel it. Just controlling. You know, manipulate it. Let's take some questions. If you have a question, please give me a wave. Marianne's first. Here. Question for Mr. Washington. I know you've been to South Africa before. As executive producer, how much say did you have in getting the film shot in Cape Town? No. Daniel, Daniel, I, I think it was originally supposed to be Buenos Aires or Rio. 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 Uh, we had talked about the fact that, you know, not wanting to be too similar to Man on Fire, you know, but Daniel went to South Africa and he liked South Africa, and that was it. You know, I think it was a wise choice. And also, I think just practically, I mean, as, aside from the look and all of that, it, from my character's perspective, it was going to be easier for me to blend in than in a black country, than in a brown country. Steve? Uh, Brandon Gleason puts in a fantastic performance as I were not normally used to seeing him like that. How did you go about casting him in that role, Daniel? And Denzel, what was it like for you working with him? Because I think it's the, the first time you have worked with him. And also, I'm wondering Get if you could <laughs> 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 have seen his performance in The Guard, and which is Golden Globe nominated, and if you thought he was robbed for an Oscar hunt. Damn. I'll answer mine first, then you Yeah, can. all right. <laughs> uh, it was actually a tough scene because it was the first day of shooting. You know, and in fact, we even went back and revisited some of some of my side of the scene anyway. But it was tough because we, were, you still were kind of working out who you are, and we had to jump right into the. I think that was the first day of shooting. No, 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 no. He's talking about Brendan Gleeson. Borrow. Oh, who am I talking about? Yeah, yeah, Liam Cunningham. Oh. We're both artists. Wait, Borrow. No, but the as well. So. I didn't do anything with Borrow. No, 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 no. Oh, but he went. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, you, yeah. I didn't have anything. <laughs> no, nothing, nothing. Although, no, I remember yeah. I had one take in the scene where the where I, I get shot, where he yeah. gets shot, yeah. I actually picked up his gun and I pointed at him and then yeah. cut it out of his No, I, I, I actually always saw Brendan Gleeson in front of me for this character. I, I always loved him. I loved him in you know, Harry Potter to Green Zone, you know. Uh, and yeah, maybe he was wrong, maybe. Uh, he's a great actor. I, I, I have a deep respect for the English acting tradition. They are uh, always very well prepared. They have like a deep uh, sensation of soul into what they do and they, and they come with a vision of the character. Action, action movies nowadays are very big, very loud, and certainly there's a major action element here. But there's also some wonderful quiet moments, more, a, lot, a lot more internalised. I'm wondering, for both of you in some ways, which ones were the most challenging and fun to do? The big, where you can go crazy, as it were, or the more, not so much menace, but the things leading up to those moments? 
You can start. I didn't. Uh, I didn't think this was an action movie. I've been hearing that. It didn't read like one. I don't even know what an action movie is. I don't know what that means. You know, does that mean you da da? No, you know, you know, hey, get that water like that. You know, yeah, you know, I don't know what that means. Um, I think it's a testament to Daniel's vision. I think it's an intense. It 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 plays. And I just saw the finished product only about a week or so ago, but it plays more intense than it read. And it's piece by piece as I as I look back on it. It was the way Daniel was putting it together. You know, one thing he talked about right from the start is how funky and dirty and raw he wanted these fights. So when I saw that fight, I mean, I saw a piece of it in the, while we were shooting of it. But when I saw that fight between Ryan and the the other the other Joe. kid, Joe, what's his name? Joe. Joe. Mm -hmm. At the end, I was like. Damn. I mean, they were going at it. They were using glass and, you know, whatever they did. They were banging on the ground, you know. So it became, it, it, I don't know if that's an action movie or it was just, it was a little uncomfortable as to how real it was. I mean, they were like, they were cutting each other up and, you know, and, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I don't think you can direct a movie like an action movie. I don't think you can do that. You can make a movie. And, uh, and when it comes to the fighting, I never saw it as fighting, I saw it as struggling. Mm. And, uh, and I think that's, uh, that's how you should perceive something if you're trying to do not a set piece, but a scene, you know. I think that all scenes that are in the movie moves the character. And if you perceive it as an action movie, maybe that's a testament that you think it's intense, then I'm happy, you know. But um, I did everything I could to, to get the right people around them. Like we had a fight coordinator. He was the fight coordinator that did the, uh, a profit. Uh, who also had very intense struggling uh, fight scenes. And he also did taking. So, 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 so I tried to gather around us people that were striving to do uh, you know, a movie, not an action piece. Young lady in the front row. Yeah, I'm Elaine Smith from Colourful Radio. Um, in this movie you chose to do your own stunts and as a result you got yourself a black eye. Why did you choose to do your own stunts and has that put you off from doing your own stunts for further movies? Yeah, well, it, it has to be us. I mean, it's, unless you, you, then you have to be so far back to hide us. Uh, the, these vehicles that they use, like the ghost stun vehicle, I forgot if that one, was he driving from up top? Yeah, he was yeah, driving He was from actually up. on the top of the hood of the car. So Ryan wasn't driving the car. So we weren't in control of where the car was moving. And in this scene, I'm handcuffed, and I'm supposed to jump up and put the handcuffs over Ryan's neck to choke him and bring him toward me. So, but the guy's up there driving, and we're, we're really not in control, and we're going fast and swerving around. So it just so happens that as I, I got whipped forward, and he got whipped back, and our heads collided, and his, the back of his head is harder than the front of my face. Because <laughs> it happened twice. It actually happened twice. It just so happened, and the second yeah. time my eye just mm, closed up. Um, can I sneak in another um, question? Might as well, yes. Yeah, uh, thank please. you. Nothing <laughs> <laughs> to do with the movie, just for my lady listeners. Um, um, how do you maintain the balance between your family life and your career? And do you still date your wife? <laughs> She's out shopping now. <laughs> she is. Uh, it, my work is just work, you know. I, I, I don't. I take my work seriously, but I don't take myself seriously. Uh, too seriously. I read a book years ago called Cagney by Cagney. It was written by James Cagney, and he talked about, you know, going to to, to the studio, working his twelve-hour day taking off his costume, getting in the car and going home. The most, the, the, most of my work is done before we start shooting, preparation work. So my normal day, and I write a lot, I write journals and, 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 and all of that. So my day starts when I get to work, I start writing, even on the way, I start writing about, or even sometime the night before, about, again, going back to the sociopath next door, how am I going to win today? Is it gonna, what's this scene about? Am I going to use charm? Am I going to use fear? Am I going to use intimidation? Am I going to use wit? 
you know. And then we do the scene, we play the scene, and I take the clothes off and I get in the car and I go home. I have a meal, I relax, watch a little television or something. <laughs> Just set it down anyway. <laughs> and then I might work for an hour and a half on, 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 on tomorrow's work and I go to bed. You know, I don't lose sleep over it. I mean, I've been doing it too long. Uh, I work better when I'm alone. So, although actually I did training day at home. It worked out all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you do but, still date your wife. Yeah, date, date. date. Yeah, take her out and we're going out to dinner tonight. I don't Good, date. I'm glad. <laughs> we're Thirty-one years, not a date. <laughs> we're <an> opportunity. <laughs> See if that comes back to haunt you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're into the last five, and I know the gentleman there has a question. Then Dean, after him. Yeah. Hi, Daniel Denzel. Really enjoyed the film. My question is for Denzel. You're an actor as well as a producer in this film. What was it, what was it that made you want to become so involved in this project? I, I can't do it any other way. Uh, you know, when I saw Snap a Cash, I was fascinated by this young filmmaker. When I met Daniel and he talked about, we sat and talked, and he talked about his life and how he grew up and what his father did and where he lived, I was, I was in as far as Daniel was concerned. I wasn't in as far as the script was concerned. I didn't think it was good enough. So I've been in the habit of developing or helping to develop material for a long time. I've been doing it for 20 years or more now. So my agent said, hey, you're doing all this work, you should get credit for it. You know, so we're going to get you a producer credit. You know, I, I, it does, it, you know, I don't think I got any money for it. <laughs> I don't remember. Maybe I got a couple extra dollars, but I, I enjoyed helping to develop material. It's, it's, it's a way for me to get into the part, and I just, I'm a logic monster. If things don't make sense, I gotta make sense. I don't know, why is he doing that? That doesn't make sense. We, you know, and then we would all sit in the room every day, day after day, and we, we work with two or three different writers, I don't know, three, four, five months. Yeah. Yeah, it took us a long time and, until I started, you know, and that's also, that's also a way for me to, to figure out my character. Dina? Hi, firstly to Denzel, um, my favourite line, I think, in the film is when you're described as the black Dorian Gray. And I wondered if you would share the secret of your youthful good looks. Um, but to both of you, how do you feel your careers have developed as you've got older? And how do you think your career choices differ now to maybe when you were younger? If you're an old man. Now. Yeah. <laughs> How old are you? Yeah. I'm, I'm 34. You know. <laughs> I got shoes yeah. older than you. I do. I got shoes older than you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to open it up to both yeah. of you. I wasn't just no. yeah. I don't know how my career moves have changed with age. No. I'm not old enough to, to, to answer that question. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say how, how, what, what's changed with age? Now, I just wondered if your um, career choices have maybe changed as you got older, and how do you feel you've developed as an actor over the years? I, th I went through a phase where I was sick of acting. You know, I was, I was ready, I was tired of it. I didn't really want to do it anymore, I was bored with it. And then I tried directing a movie, and I was like, shoot, <laughs> get back over here. It made me appreciate acting more. Uh, when I turned 50, I looked in the mirror and I realized, hey, you know, this ain't the dress rehearsal. You know, this is life, you know, and I don't know how much more of it I'm going to have. And even if I have 50 more years, I probably won't remember the last 20 or 30 of them anyway. In the last three or four years, especially after doing this play on Broadway with the great Viola Davis, uh, Fences, uh, it reminded me of of how I started, which was in the theater, and how I worked in the theater, and how thorough you needed to be in the theater. And I made a commitment, I, re I recommitted myself to being thorough as an actor. Uh, I want to do good work, you know, and I want to do good work with people that I want to work with. That's why I said the first thing to me wasn't the screenplay. I wasn't that impressed with the screenplay. 
if I hadn't met Dan, I probably wouldn't have done this movie because it didn't interest me that much. I didn't think it was that good. But I liked Daniel and I liked the way his film was. So you, you, when you get the chance to work with people you like and the people that are talented, you, 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 that's rare. You know, I don't know how many more movies I'm going to get the opportunity to make. And I don't want to look back and go, man, I just kind of floated through that one or I just did that one for the money or something like that. I want to be able to say that I've worked as hard as I could and I did the best work that I could do. With that, I'm terribly sorry to say time has beaten us. I know there's lots of questions out there, but our guests have to move on, I'm afraid. Um, so can I ask you to stay in your seats while they depart the room, but please join me in thanking Denzel and Daniel. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Got to go date my wife now, right? <laughs> Take on a date. <laughs> 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 yeah, see that shopping bill. Ooh, yeah, is that yours? You drop the key.